Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. This is my review for The Killer on Netflix. So The Killer is a film that just dropped on Netflix a few days ago and I finally got a chance to check it out. It was directed by David Fincher and it stars Michael Fassbender as a hitman. Um, this film did really well in the festival circuit when it was being screened at festivals a few months back and I've been very excited for this movie. You know, I love David Fincher as a director. He directed uh, The Social Network, which is one of my favorite movies ever. And you know, he's, you'll know David Fincher directed movies like Seven, um, you know, The Social Network, Gone Girl. Um, he's a really, the girl with the dragon tattoo, he is a very well, uh, well, uh, well known director, but he's, for a good reason, he's really, really good. He also did Mindhunter on Netflix, which I've only seen like half of season one. I really want to go back and watch it though, because I was enjoying it. Um, but anyway, so I was very excited for this film. Um, I think Michael Fassbender is a really good actor. I haven't seen him in a lot other than like a few things. But um, I still think he's a really good actor. Also, Tilda Swinton. She her role was a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be in this film, but still she made a very big, very very big impact. Um, but yeah, so I got a chance to watch it, and I got to tell you, this was great. I really really enjoyed it. I only just watched it today, and wow, it was such a fun time. You know, it's like it's a thriller, but it's like an elevated thriller. You know, it's sort of looking into the psyche of this hitman, and I got to tell you, I really, really really liked it. I thought it was so well acted. It was, I was like enthralled by it the entire time. I thought there's one action scene that happens. Oh, by the way, this is going to be spoilers. So if you have not seen the movie, um, probably don't watch this video. But um, yeah, this will have spoilers. So yeah, there's a fight scene um, halfway through the movie in like uh, the chapter about Florida. It's like separated by chapters, which is really cool. I think this is based on a book. Um, I'll have to look that up. But um, yeah, there's a fight scene that takes place in the Florida chapter with the brute, you know, which is one of the guys that attacked his, his girlfriend. And, um, wow, that was so, I, that had me on the edge of my seat. Like, I was, like, audibly gasping. And, like, whenever he got hit really hard, I would go, like, oh, you know, like, it's hard for a movie to get me to, um, have those physical and vocal reactions. But it did. It was so, so, um, well choreographed and it would have me on the edge of my seat. Um, but, yeah, I thought the sort of, um, look into the psyche of this hitman was extremely, extremely, um, well done. And very, very interesting to see, like, you know, there's like an inciting in incident, right, at the start of it, where he misses a shot. And we've come to learn um, throughout the film that it's like, it was, it was sort of, you know, half on purpose because his, his conscience is starting to bleed in and that it's impossible to be objective in these um, manners. I also just realized that we never hear, we never learn his name in the film. He goes by a various, um, various aliases when he's like getting on the flights. But he's just, I, he's never referred to. I guess he's just the killer. But um, yeah, I just realized that. But um, yeah, so I really enjoyed that look into his psyche. I mean, it's done so well throughout the film. The way he repeats that philosophy to himself about trust no one, um, empathy is weakness, um, you know, uh, what was it? It's get the job, do, do, fight the battles you're paid for. That's what it was. I love how that philosophy was sort of broken down throughout the film. And it was just done really, really well. So yeah, I thought that was so good it's you know very much an elevated thriller it's not your typical you know run-of-the-mill hitman thriller movie like you know like uh things with Liam Neeson that's what I think of when I think of like a hitman sort of um thriller movie is like a Liam Neeson movie but this is so much more elevated it was so great his monologue at the start of the movie um before like you know the, he gets interrupted with the packages that come in is so well done and it's you know oh I love it um also, that conversation he has with Tilda Swinton in the restaurant is so, so well done. That metaphor she uses about the hunter and the grizzly bear, it, oh, oh God, I, I just, I was hanging on every word. I thought it was so good. Also, I felt terrible when she got shot in the head. Like, I didn't expect it, and I was like, oh my God, I really wish she had a bigger role in the film, because Tilda Swinton is such, like, I don't want to say underrated, because everyone knows Tilda Swinton, everyone knows how great she is, but I feel like she just doesn't, like, you know... I really want her in like a new leading role film. I know she had like 3,000 Years of Longing come out not long ago, which I didn't I didn't get a chance to see. But um, yeah, she's a great actress. I really love Tilda Swinton. But yeah, um, some of the kills in this film are brutal. I mean, I've never seen a close-up of someone being shot in the head in slow motion like there was with Tilda Swinton. Like, ugh, that was terrible. And also when he shot the brute when he was on the floor, it's some of these shots, it's, it's like so graphic, you know, like, ugh. It really, it just, it, it, it makes you think about what kind of person you need to be to do this kind of stuff. Um, also, I felt so bad when he shot Leo, the taxi driver. Oh my God, he was giving you everything you wanted, you know? I really didn't think he was going to shoot him. 
but I suppose at that point in the film he hadn't developed sort of as a character yet. Um, but yeah, I also really love the ending when he, I guess, chooses not to kill the um, the client, Claiborne, is that his name? When he chooses not to kill the client. Um, and then we sort of just cut to him being, um, you know, on the back in Dominican Republic with his girlfriend who is recovered now after she was attacked because that's the result, that's right, that's basically the plot of the film is that he missed the shot in the first, um, the first like 15 minutes, sort of on purpose, sort of not. And the client, or Hodges, sort of the guy who he works for, sort of set him up and said to um, Claiborne, oh, do you want some insurance? And I guess the insurance is sending two other hitmen to go attempt to kill him. And, you know, obviously he wasn't there, but his girlfriend was, and they, you know, they fuck her up. And so he wants revenge. It's a revenge film, basically, like a hitman slash revenge film. But it's done really, really well. It's David Fincher, it's elevated, it's great. There's some really cool stuff. And again, that fight scene was just, ugh. It was so good. I was also really loving... I love... You know, I love these kind of movies. I really do. Especially when they're done well. It's just so so fun to watch him, like, do the little spy... Like, not spy things. Like, the little hitman things with the... With the, um, fob fabricator. How he was, like, you know... And swiping cards and pickpocketing. And it was really cool. Um, also, I felt so bad for Dolores when he snapped her neck. I mean, oh, I had hope for him when he clipped her, um... Clipped her wristbands off when he said something like, Show no empathy. I was like, oh, he's showing empathy. Wow, you know, this is real character development. And then, I guess, 10 minutes later, he snaps her neck on the stairs after he gets what he wanted, which was the transaction numbers, in order to get the address of the hitman who fucked up his girlfriend. But, um, yeah, I really did love all that spy stuff where he was, you know, washing out the car and, um, you know, to get rid of the DNA and stuff and, you know, dumping the bodies, um, doing the fob um, fabricator, swiping the keys, stuff like that I love. Um, I also loved how the theme of music was used in this film, how he uses mu music to drown out his inner voice, I guess, is sort of his explanation for it. There were some really good songs in this movie. It had um, it has a really good soundtrack, and also the end credit scene song. I don't know if that was used in the... Um, not end credit scene, just the end credits. I don't know if that song was used um, in the film at all, but for some reason, during the movie, that song was stuck in my head. I think it was used at some point, but that song was stuck in my head, and then when it came on for the credits, I was, like, kind of freaking out, because I was like, wait, I was just singing, like, thinking of the song the entire movie, but, um, yeah, so, that was pretty crazy, but overall, I thought this movie was so great. What a good time, man. Honestly, it was, it was truly great. I really enjoyed it. It's one of the, I think, one of the best films I've seen this year, um, and I'll definitely watch it again at some point. But anyway, that's my review for The Killer. Um, it's streaming now on Netflix. It's directed by David Fincher. It stars Michael Fassbender as a hitman. It's a great film. Go check it out. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it, and it would really help me out. Leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the film. Did you see it? Are you, are you not going to see it? Are you planning on seeing it? Let me know. Um, also, if you haven't already, turn on post notifications so I don't miss when I upload. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.